I'm Jasmine Theodora and as I've said before, I love being a woman. Our warmth, openness, grace, and beauty can inspire and influence others in ways men can't. And there is such strength in that, which people often unfortunately forget. And femininity embodies power just as much as masculinity, but while masculinity is about doing, femininity is about being. Now, if you don't want to be a soft woman, to have a soft demeanor, then this video, of course, isn't for you. If you want to be a fierce boss, babe, then that's your prerogative and I wouldn't judge you for it. But if you want to cultivate a peaceful environment, instill a sense of tranquility in the people around you, where they feel fully loved and considered by you, and become an enchanting woman simply because of the love, peace, and the softness that you exude, this is for you. Personally, I've had quite a few female friends tell me how they're frustrated with the hardness that they exude. Whether they're rude, impatient, negative, bossy, controlling, they've realized that attitude creates so much disharmony. It can be difficult to break out of that and cultivate softness, but it's so unbelievably worth the effort. Now, softness. What do I mean when I say softness? Well, softness is naturally the opposite of hardness. So let's think of the qualities that are in opposition to hardness. What's something hard? A rock. I'm gonna go get a rock. I found a rock. <laughs> what qualities does this rock fundamentally not exhibit? Well, it is not yielding, it does not give, it is not flexible, it is not tender. If I were to drop it, my foot wouldn't receive it with a kind of gentle caress. It is not vulnerable nor delicate, quite the opposite, in fact. So let's compile these qualities that are the opposite of hard. Yielding, flexible, gentle, amenable, tender, vulnerable, delicate. These are soft qualities. And femininity is strength through softness. Softness is effortlessly disarming. Softness enchants and invites people to let their guard down because you don't have to be defensive in the presence of what is soft. The irony is that when we allow ourselves to be softer physically and mentally, we can be incredibly strong. We can enact so much positive change through our softness. Disclaimer. Before I get into the rest of the video, I want to say that choosing to always be what is perceived as feminine does not always mean you're choosing to do the right thing. Prioritizing the appearance of something over the essence always leads to disaster and losing the very thing we wish to be seen as. I've unfortunately met many young women who suppress what they classify as masculine traits, such as competitiveness and forwardness when it comes to setting boundaries, and they put themselves in compromising situations because they're afraid of being perceived as unfeminine, and that is not okay. Now, I will always value tenderness and gentleness. I love embracing femininity because that's how we embrace our strengths and fulfill our roles as women. But if being meek and gentle to be perceived as feminine results in a lie, compromises your safety or that of others, that is not okay. If someone, for instance, is abusing your child and you as the mother don't respond in the protective, aggressive manner you are capable of because you're afraid of being perceived as unfeminine, that's immoral. Protecting your child is part of nurturing, which is an important feminine trait, so while it may require aggressive behavior and pull on masculine energy sometimes, it is ultimately a feminine virtue to properly nurture your child. And if a man refuses to be gentle with an infant because he's worried about being perceived as unmasculine, that's immoral. Being gentle and nurturing with an infant is likewise an important aspect of protecting and providing, which are masculine virtues. So the point that I'm making here is that we should not value being perceived as feminine more than the essence of femininity. Femininity is not just a costume you put on, it's not an act. If you're acting in a feminine manner just for these social advantages, you're actually disconnected from your feminine essence. The desire to be feminine is then coming from an extrinsic place instead of an intrinsic place. And that is why I'm making these videos, because there's been an attack on womanhood lately, and women have been discouraged from embracing our femininity for decades, which has left 
so many of us lost, disconnected from our feminine nature and miserable. And often when women finally realize they want to reconnect with their femininity, they overthink it and worry too much about being perceived as feminine instead of truly reconnecting with their innate feminine essence. And that can result in women making poor choices that compromise their safety or they think they can't be ambitious or assertive with their boundaries just so that they're transiently perceived as feminine in that situation. But being gentle does not mean being unopinionated. Empathy does not equate to slavish servility, and sensitivity does not equate to emotional instability. They can mean those things, but virtuous, healthy femininity does not include any of the latter. And a wonderful thing about being a woman is that while men develop into their masculinity, women are born in a feminine state. We are inherently feminine, but again, because of the attack on womanhood and every person's fallen desire to control and dominate for the sake of their ego, Goes, learning to reconnect with one's feminine essence has become almost a ubiquitous need for women. And that is the end of the disclaimer. I hope that you all enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. I'm getting close to 10,000 subscribers, which is incredible. So if you'd like to support me, I would deeply appreciate it. And with all that being said, let's get into the art of softness, starting with gentleness. Gentleness has been losing its positive connotation, especially in women, being replaced with fierceness and aggression as the feminist movement has made its mark. There is a demand that women be more fierce and ruthless, and while I'm all for equal respect between the two sexes, I'm not at all a fan of male and female homogeneity. Women and men are not interchangeable, but that still allows for plenty of room for compatibility and harmony. Gentleness describes the manner in which a situation is approached and how a person deals with it. Gentleness is the way young girls treat their dolls with soft caresses and sweet lullabies. It's how mothers console, soothe, and even discipline their children. Gentleness nurtures, comforts, soothes, and conciliates. Again, gentleness does not equate to being a pushover. It does not mean that you are not opinionated. It is the manner in which you express yourself and how you interact with others. It's not the absence of expression. For instance, saying, may I? Before I started focusing on femininity, I would seldom reflect upon taking control of situations. I wouldn't ask for counsel or permission to handle a situation as much as I should have. I would just sort of go for it and take charge, but in doing so, I wouldn't leave room for suggestion or reflection and I would neglect the consideration of those around me. Now, when I pause and ask for input and a blessing, I often receive such great counsel that completely changes my course of action. I realize how to go about things without disturbing others and even bring them joy with the simplest of accommodations. The very act of stopping and considering others cultivates empathy and shows others that you acknowledge and care about their needs and desires. So if what you're about to engage in is going to affect someone else, then asking for their opinion on the matter or for their blessing by saying, may I, you know, May I practice piano while you work? May I check my phone for a brief moment? Emphasizes how much you care about them. Of course, this is not always necessary and it can definitely even be weird to ask for someone's blessing for certain things, like if you need to use the restroom or something like that. But as a general rule, if I'm spending time with someone or if I'm in close vicinity to someone and what I'm about to do or engage in is going to interfere with them in a perhaps unpreferable manner, asking for their blessing or opinion on the matter emphasizes how much I want them to feel considered and cared about. Perhaps you want to open the blinds to let some natural light into the room. Perhaps you want to listen to music while you study with someone. Whatever it may be, being mindful of the people around you and considering their needs or preferences before you engage in something will soften your presence dramatically. Number two, authenticity and vulnerability. Vulnerability opens us into our humanity, which builds connection and wholeness rather than reinforcing separation. Vulnerability is a collection of choices we make every day. It's choosing to show up and be real, the choice to be honest. There's something so admirable and magnetic about the real unabashed woman who is not afraid to express her true 
feelings and emotions in a graceful, dignified manner. Vulnerability is a powerful part of femininity and yet culturally it's been framed as a weakness. I've come across some old advice that told women that to be feminine we have to limit our emotional range, like we should suppress our anger to be perceived as feminine, but that's disingenuous. As aforementioned, you should not be concerned with being perceived as feminine. If all that's on your mind when you desire to embrace femininity is being perceived as feminine, then your femininity is nothing but a facade, a false display, and you're disconnected from your feminine essence. To truly embrace embrace your femininity, you must be authentic, and vulnerability is the source of authenticity. To be vulnerable is to be raw, open, and unguarded with your heart, mind, and soul. To be vulnerable is to see and embrace things as they are rather than how we wish they would be. With that comes the power to enact real positive change as you're embracing how things truly are. Only by genuinely acknowledging the nature of the circumstances at hand are we able to effectively and positively improve those circumstances. There is so much softness in vulnerability because you're giving up your toughness, letting down your jagged, rough, sharp edges that you may use to shield and protect yourself. When you're vulnerable, you're honest and you open yourself up risking pain and rejection, but vulnerability and honesty is the only way for us to cultivate real and intimate connections. When you're authentically vulnerable with people, you soften yourself and you invite them to be open as well since they don't feel like they have to protect and close themselves off from you. And please note that vulnerability does not mean bearing all necessarily. Being honest and real does not equate to flaunting details about your private life. Rather, Burying your full self with only a select few people is wise, not closed off. Vulnerability is not inherently appropriate, it depends on the situation. It's okay to speak the truth without speaking all of it. Tasteful vulnerability is the foundation of authenticity since oversharing can actually make you seem fake and maybe like you're trying to manipulate others with how radically open you're presenting yourself. The faux feminine woman is actually a common archetype of masculine women. It's the kind of women who puts a facade of femininity only to manipulate people, but deep inside, she's actually very disconnected from her feminine essence. We don't want to be a faux feminine woman. Again, we should value the authentic feminine essence, not the perception of femininity. Next, flexibility and cooperativeness. One of the most unbridled powerful traits of a woman is her deep desire for peace, cooperation, and cohesion. This is probably because femininity thrives in safety. If you want to be soft, you must feel comfortable enough to soften yourself. A soft woman avoids rigidity in the face of inconvenience, and she does not waste time demanding things be done exactly her way out of pride. She understands that sometimes to achieve the flowing, soft, tranquil environment she thrives in, something's got to give. Someone needs to nurture it and flow along with inevitable changes. For tension or drama to be relieved, someone often needs to take a step back and change their perspective or reevaluate their resolve. So if, for instance, someone's taking longer to complete something than she previously anticipated, the soft woman will, at least when she's able to, practice patience and change her schedule to accommodate the change instead of resisting the change causing tension or drama. She bends in the face of trouble instead of breaks, and the act of doing this demonstrates compassion as well for those she's interacting with. Oftentimes, practicing flexibility and cooperativeness will require patience and sacrifice on your end. You may need to forgo your own desires to avoid tension or help others meet their needs, which is hard on the ego, but it will soften you in an extraordinary way. Being generous with your patience, tenderness, and compassion is incredibly fulfilling and will make way for the flowing, comfortable, and tranquil environment that you thrive in. Also, while I was doing some research for this video, I found out that women are actually physically much more flexible than men due to the makeup of our connective tissue. So it's no wonder that flexibility as a character trait is feminine. Number four, I think, dealing with overthinking and softening your mental chatter. Us women have higher levels of neuroticism compared to men, which makes us more sensitive to negative emotions. Because of my neuroticism and proclivity to dwell in my negative emotions, I overthink practically everything I do and I catastrophize situations often. And when you're too hard on yourself, when you give up hope and expect the world to come down on you, you harden yourself as a means of protection. And there are definitely times in which that may be necessary 
but it is not okay if it compromises your ability to be soft. The thing is, in this fallen world, pain is an indivisible thread in the fabric of life, and to try to tear it out is both futile and calamitous. The pain you pursue in the gym results in better health. Being open with your insecurities results in more confidence and charisma. Suffering through pain and anxieties is necessary to build courage and perseverance. So. While pain is inevitable, we shouldn't always expect the worst to happen. We can't even hope to soften ourselves if we are constantly living in fear. So throughout the day, when I overthink and expect the worst to happen, I catch myself. I remind myself that I'm kind of neurotic and that's why I'm having those thoughts. Anxiety isn't always useless. Anxiety can be a normal reaction to stress and can even be beneficial in some scenarios. It can alert us of danger and that's why we shouldn't suppress our anxiety, but instead recognize where it's coming from and whether it's actually useful anxiety or if it's simply coming from our proclivity to overthink and dwell in our negative thoughts. So I think to myself, is this productive anxiety or unproductive anxiety? Is there a realistic threat present or is this coming from my neuroticism? And 99% of the time there is no threat, it's really just a simple day. It is so easy to get carried away with negative thoughts, but before it spins out of control, it's best to acknowledge that your thoughts may be irrational. By design, we flow with emotion and that is lovely because it can allow us to be so passionate, but that also makes us susceptible to being swept up by our negative fearful thoughts. So being aware of your proclivity to ruminate on the negative can help you reevaluate the situation realistically. If you feel anxious about something, recognize what it is you feel anxious about and try to evaluate if you're simply catastrophizing the situation and reevaluate with your sensitivity to negative emotion in mind. And this brings me into my next point. Address your negative emotions. Being soft requires resolve and endurance as the world and life drags and pressures down on us. And as you continue to cultivate endurance, you begin to address the parts of yourself that you've rejected. For instance, if you've always rejected the part of you that's angry to be perceived as feminine, you feel ashamed experiencing strong emotions of anger or frustration, and you suppress those emotions. You may have been taught that being a feminine woman means you have to be tirelessly agreeable and not express anger or frustration under any circumstance. But if you suppress something, it comes back with a vengeance. So the solution is not to suppress those emotions, but to address them and to productively and appropriately express them. It is not good to let negative emotions like anger, sadness, or jealousy consume you, but that's precisely what's going to happen if you suppress emotion. It's going to come back with a vengeance. So by accepting the negative emotion and giving yourself the space to express it, you're validating the part of you that's hurt. And you're able to finally start to tackle whatever it is that's making you experience the negative emotion, thereby opening up the opportunity to properly explore and fix whatever is causing you to feel angry, sad, jealous, etc. Because if you suppress the emotion and ignore what caused you to feel that negative emotion, you very well may harden yourself as a coping mechanism. To express negative emotion in a protective way is an art within itself. To express sadness, anger, frustration, failure, jealousy, etc. productively is a lifelong struggle, but mainly Try to keep a collected level head, focus on what you can control in that situation, and remember that emotions are just feedback. They are your brain's way of informing you if something good or bad is happening in your life, if something is favorable or unfavorable. Emotions are simply means to an end. We can use them to help us achieve our goals, but they're not the purpose themselves. Emotions are just these things that you transiently experience, and then they're gone. And then another emotion comes along, and then it's gone and is replaced by another one, and on and on and on. So emotions are feedback, not something to suppress, but something to utilize. Sadness, for instance, is an indicator of something lacking, and thus it's a call to action to understand that lack and find a way to replace it. To let your emotions consume you and block your judgment is not good, but just as well, suppressing your emotions will lead to them gradually consuming you. What you suppress comes back with a vengeance. It's like psycho. 101. So address your negative emotions. Let them help you find out what needs to be tackled and fixed and try to express them in a calm manner so you're able to productively resolve what needs to be resolved. 
That way you don't have to harden yourself as a coping mechanism when experiencing a negative emotion. Next, handling conflict calmly and gracefully. When a woman is truly in tune with her feminine essence, she's more calm and not so easily offended. A woman like this is so connected to the truth of who she is, what she was made to be, she's just not so easily swayed or knocked off her mark. Now, as I said before, if you're in a dangerous situation, you should not be concerned with anything except for your safety. But hopefully that's the exception and most of the time the conflict you deal with is social and not violent. In social conflict, keeping a cool head allows for resolution to take place and an understanding to be reached. When someone initiates rudely, gracefully responding with kindness cuts their nastiness short. It's just like what they say, kill them with kindness. A person being rude who receives kindness and grace becomes embarrassed and usually stops and either disengages or re-engages in a calm manner. As I aforementioned, no one feels the need to protect themselves or be defensive in the presence of what is soft. And during a conflict, by having a calm, collected demeanor, you will reduce tension and soften the other person's resolve too. Also, in my relationship, when we have a disagreement, I always try to remind myself that it's him and I against the problem, not me against him. That also really helps me focus on solving the issue at hand instead of me getting upset with him. Next, this is an important one, speaking softly. Oftentimes, how you say something is just as important as what you're saying. When you're careful with how you speak, not just with what you say, you're emphasizing how you want what you're saying to be interpreted. You're making sure that the person you're talking to knows that you're not attacking them, even if what you're saying may be difficult to hear or slightly embarrassing. If I say, for instance, you have something in your teeth in a soft tone and with a soft countenance instead of a judgy tone like you have something in your teeth, they know that you're simply offering them some help instead of trying to embarrass them or make it seem like you're disgusted. Thus, they will most likely react to that comment receptively instead of defensively. If you say, for instance, could you please turn down your music instead of could you please turn down your music? It's unlikely that they feel attacked or judged and they are much more likely to reciprocate kindness and take you into consideration because you took them into consideration with how you talk to them. Even if they didn't consider you initially when they began playing music, demonstrating courtesy and warmth on your end while asking them to turn down the music inspires them to be courteous as well. So. Refraining from raising your voice, not speaking in a sarcastic tone or a negative tone, get your point across more efficiently by not diverting attention to an unpleasant tone and inspires the person you're interacting with to be courteous to you in return. I also personally like to refrain from stating commands. Instead of saying, put the spaghetti in the pantry, I'll say, could you please put the spaghetti in the pantry? Or, I hope you have a nice day instead of have a nice day. This emphasizes that you're not trying to exert your will over theirs. You're not trying to control them or command them. Something as small and seemingly insignificant as that can have a dramatic effect on your softness. Next point, ask for and accept help. Learn to receive. Contrary to popular opinion, as women, we can't do it all. And that's okay, and neither can men. Human beings were not in any capacity made to be independent of each other. And hyper-independence is a result of a deep-seated fear of abandonment, rejection, and oftentimes pride. It's not a recipe for a good life. Those who are overly independent and don't ask for nor accept help are not more competent nor more efficient. They're categorically less so because they believe they can do it all when we again were not made to do it all. Being strong and independent is seemingly possible until one day you realize that we are all made to need other people and those people are nowhere in sight because you never let them be. Then being strong and independent is no longer a choice, it's your only option. Asking for and accepting help is also a sign of humility because you're aware of your limitations and you embrace them. And I'm not just talking about asking for help while carrying something heavy, but also when you're having an emotional crisis and need Need someone to talk to and help you handle your emotional burden. To humble yourself and ask for help takes courage in that regard. It does not make you a weak person to admit your limitations whatsoever. An overly independent person is weaker because they can't admit to themselves that they have limitations. Their fear 
of rejection or their overwhelming sense of pride is quite literally clouding their judgment. Pride is the antithesis of softness because softness gives, it yields, pride does not. When you're prideful, you're quite literally too full of yourself to be able to give, to yield, to be amenable. There's no use in acting like we can do it all or that in trying to do it all, we are stronger, more confident, or powerful. We put ourselves at unnecessary risk, we're less effective, more prideful, and we cultivate a hardness when we're unaccepting of help. Independence is just an illusion anyways. Everyone is either dependent on their loved ones or corporations and the government. One group is meant to love you and the other two never can. So learning to accept the goodness that people want to give you when someone extends their kindness to you, there's no need for you to say you don't need to do that. People are aware that they don't need to show up for you. They simply want to give you some goodness. So being accepting of and asking for help, embracing your limitations will also soften you dramatically Dramatically. Next point, avoid judging others. If you want to be soft, then avoiding to criticize those around you is critical. You cannot even hope to be soft if you don't have compassion for others, if you don't express love and have respect for those around you. I'm of course not saying you should not offer advice, especially if it's solicited and appropriate, but soft feminine beings are, as I aforementioned, tender. And when you speak ill of others and attempt to disparage them, you begin to compromise your softness. You're demonstrating that you don't care enough about how they feel to consider them. You're also demonstrating pride by ignoring your shortcomings to feel it is appropriate to judge another person's shortcomings. And pride, again, is the antithesis of softness. Point number, I don't know, maybe a 10? <laughs> Cultivate a safe environment for yourself. There are going to be times when we need to end relationships with people who unashamedly cross our boundaries, are in opposition to our values, no longer show respect or love for us, and no longer enrich our lives. If you allow toxic relationships to just be, the consequence is a disconnect that hardens you. It is next to impossible to soften yourself and open yourself up when you feel stressed, violated, disrespected, drained, or insignificant. You close up and harden to protect yourself when that happens. The key is to gently and graciously end those relationships. It takes so much character and strength to be gentle yet firm with those who don't show the same love and respect towards you. Next point, inner security. Although it is a very important thing to cultivate a safe environment, to be able to be soft wherever you go, you need to cultivate inner security. It's that gentle balance between humility and confidence. Again, when a woman is truly secure in her femininity, she is not easily swayed. This comes from an intrinsic and deep connection to the truth of who you are as a feminine being and embracing your God-given purpose. We can be secure in who God made us, our station in life, and even stormy circumstances because we have hope in Christ. We all have insecurities, I have a host of them, but the best way to deal with them is to not keep them as pests, but to submit them to Christ. And finally, saying, I'm sorry. I have seen, unfortunately, a lot of women these days telling other women to stop saying I'm sorry. Of course, over-apologizing is not a good thing. It's a sign of a deep-seated insecurity and inner wounds, like you're almost apologizing for your existence. That said, if you want to be soft, empathy and tenderness are imperative. And I'm not just talking about apologizing when we hurt someone. Of course, it is monumentally important to apologize genuinely if we're responsible for someone's pain. It opens up our vulnerability to them and is a commitment to change and make amends. If we don't, then we remain closed off and distant. But even when we hear something is wrong in someone else's life, saying I'm sorry, offering your condolences, shows we care about the other person. When you love someone, you share in their pain and distress. So by simply saying I'm sorry when discussing something unpleasant or painful that happened to them, you're not taking the blame for distressing them. You're simply emphasizing with them and making it known that you're there for them. Well, everyone, that is the end of the art of softness. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm going to be doing more art of femininity videos like the art of grace and the art of mystery. So please subscribe to see those. Thank you so much for watching. I am Jasmine Theodora and goodbye. Mm -hmm.